first on the agenda. Are there any changes or additions, Eric? Yes, there are. We have uh, a few additions here. Uh, first one would be accept the resignation of a member of the fire department. Under new business, uh, continue our new business, uh, sign a cruiser lease. Okay. We will also be appointing a new police officer. Okay. And discuss the phase two construction project here in the building. Okay. All right. Is that it? That is. It's enough. <laughs> it's enough. All right. Next, uh, approve the minutes. The minutes of 12 5 22. So I have a second. motion by Judy and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on these minutes? I was just going to uh, I checked with Mary Weston and she was not in the hospital. Okay. So we can just take that out. Okay. Delete that part. Any other discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are passed. Next, the minutes of 12 12 22. Do I hear a motion regarding them? So moved. We have a motion by Judy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on these minutes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are passed. We have liquor control tonight. I doubt it's here. So. Okay. All right. Moving on to new business. Should we do the uh, the additions to the agenda first? Additions to the agenda. Do you want to start with those? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So we have the first one: accept resignation of fire department member. Yeah, uh, I think you have that before you in your paperwork. Mm -hmm. We do not. Uh, okay. No, we don't. No, no, not no, much. No. But we don't. So the letter, Paul has a letter. Paul, do you have that letter upstairs? I do. Can we get a copy okay. made for each of the members? Okay. Sorry. I've not. Thank you. Okay. So we forgot. We only go on to another item and then yeah. we'll bring down. Yes. We'll go to sign the cruiser lease. Tina, you want to explain the, what's the background on that? This is a lease that uh, we were able to get a little bit early, um, and we can't really let it go because it takes so long to get these uh, cruisers and whatnot. It's a lease for four years. It's um, for $76,269.50. The reason that it's more than normal is because we're starting to include the radios in these leased cars because our radios are not good and they're not, um, we're going to try to replace them. So it makes more sense to get a cruiser all fit, ready to go. Um, and yeah, it's at 6.99% interest for four years and the payments will start in November of 23. But we just need to have you guys approve it. What type of cruiser is it? It's a Chevy Tahoe. Like the ones we have. <coughs> and would, we, would we get delivery of it by November 2023 or not? Yes. Well, we're getting delivery of it right off. They're yeah. just not getting payment of it until November of 23. Well, that's, that's good. That's good. All right, do I hear a motion regarding that? I'll make a motion to approve the lease of a 2023 Chevy Tahoe with Republic First National Corporation for four years for a total lease price of $76,269.50 for the police department. All right, I have a motion by Don. Is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. We'll go back to the number one, accept the resignation. The fire department, you have the memo in front of you. So this is uh, Mike Just Jarvin, a long-term member of the fire department. 
is uh, submit his resignation. Do I hear a motion regarding that? I'll make, make a motion. Go ahead, Brian. Make a motion we accept it. I have a motion by Brian and a second by Don. Yep. Is there any further discussion on this? I'd like to make sure we send him a thank you. How many years have you been there? 19. 19. 19. It sounds a little edgy. Effectively, is there issues? It's a personal issue on his part, yes. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Number three, appoint a police officer. Jason, you want to tell about it? Uh, we've offered, offered a job to Jimmy Sawyer. He's a full-time certified officer. He currently works for Stowe Police Department. He's been in law enforcement since 2010. He's also worked uh, in the state of Georgia as well as the Sheriff's Department. But, uh, he's a good guy, background all checked out, and we're looking to get him up and running in January. Yeah, sounds like he'll hit the ground running because he's all certified and ready to go. Correct. That's great. And I'll make us full staff. So. Okay. Perfect. Do I hear a motion regarding this? I'll make a motion to hire James Sawyer as a full-time police officer at a rate of $31.84 per hour. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Brian. Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed. Yeah, make sure you tell him welcome for us. Nice to steal an officer from Stowe. That's not what Charles Sacker said in my office. I know. I know. That's why he said that. He was very gracious, but yeah. All right, uh, number four, the, the agenda additions, the construction project. So the phase two, phase one project was completed earlier this summer. Uh, what we have upstairs is uh, the new windows on the back side of the building. The two windows previously that were there have been sealed up. Brickwork was completed, they did a beautiful job. Um, but we have a big open room. Uh, the intent of the project, of course, is to create the three offices upstairs versus the one that we had previously. Um, DBI Construction received the, the bid for the project. The second phase of the project uh, is to be paid for out of the next year's budget, the budget we're currently discussing for a proposal. And where we aren't allowed to uh, spend Please money that hasn't been approved by the, by the taxpayers yet, uh, they have proposed floating us on the cost <coughs> of the project if they would be allowed to start the project in January versus July. The summer months are their extremely busy time for construction, January not so much. They'd like to be able to keep carpenters on staff versus taking the risk of him taking a job with someone else because it's so hard to come by working personnel. Uh, it would work very well on our behalf because summer is busy for us as well uh, to get that work done. The, uh, the cost of the project uh, certainly uh, without having to guarantee funds that haven't been approved by the taxpayers, we do have money in the capital building, capital building fund that are more than sufficient to cover down the, the proposed or projected cost of the construction. So it, it wouldn't be a problem in paying for that uh, out of that money if need be, but it's more like a promissory note, that the money is there in the event that the voters turn down the budget, uh, then we would still be able to pay for the project come July. Okay. But they're willing to float that until then, if they could start in January. It's a four to six week long project. Uh, I met with the staff here that it would be disrupted as a result of that, and uh, the discussion was very, very good. Uh, we decided the uh, best bet for uh, the one person for displacement here would be Paula, our HR director, where she doesn't have contact with the public or any public requests made to her directly. Uh, there would be the least amount of impact in the building. Uh, she can uh, take up residency temporarily, <coughs> excuse me, in the side room uh, at the rescue building. They have a full uh, hardline hookup up there for our computers. Our new phone system allows for a forwarding of her phone to her cell phone so that it looks like it's her office phone that's making calls, receiving calls. 
called the bounce to her cell phone. So uh, with that plan in mind, uh, we would ask that we be given or give DBI permission to start the construction in January. And they'd be done mid-February or so. Sounds like a good fit. That way uh, their employees don't have to be down as much. Correct. Keep them working through the winter. Correct. And so Bill and Corey are okay with sharing some of their space? They are. I talked to Bill the other day about it. And no <clears> problem whatsoever. His, most of his staff that work in that, that side office there are the crews at night. Right. Because the Bill and Corey's office is, is locked up. But uh, their the Paul's only be there Monday to Friday or in the daytime hours. So yep. nighttime hours won't be any crossover. Sounds good. Do you need a motion for this? I uh, would please. Yes, just to authorize them to uh, to begin the construction in, in January, uh, with the you know our the finances being that we have a, a fund with money in it that would be there to pay if the taxpayers voted down the budget at town meeting, we would still be able to accomplish payment of it. Yeah, that sounds and good. Say, tell me again what the um, that fund is. It's the cattle building fund. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. And there's no problem with. With change, I mean, putting the money into different accounts after the, the vote. Well, the, the intent would the money would be there more or less as a promissory note to pay DBI in July as they would expect. If the budget got turned down, we were still trying to work through a budget rework. We would still cover it. We could still cover the payment. We can't we can't uh, make the promise that they can start and we'll promise to pay them in July out of the budget that hasn't been approved yet. That's. That would be the, the problem there. So, but with this this money that's sitting in that fund, we would be able to cover the cost. So they're waiting. They'll be waiting for the money until July. That's their offer is to float us until July if they can do it. Now it works. It's a benefit to us and benefit to them. Again. So it's a it, both sides would benefit mm -hmm. from it. And the and the cost, um, they're they're not perceiving or anticipating that the project will go over budget? Nope. And they haven't changed their, their uh, estimate at all. It's $116,000 to do the phase two portion. I'm just, yeah, my only concern is that our budget looks so onerous and I mean, yeah. But if there is money already in the capital um, yeah. building budget. Yeah. So do I hear a motion regarding this? Yeah. No. I make a motion that we Accept the offer that DBI Authorize DBI to start construction. Okay, authorize DBI to start construction. Anything financial I have to put in there? No, because the bid's already been accepted by the board. Okay. All right. I have a motion by Judy. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this motion? I'll just say thank you, DBI, for getting this started and getting it done as quickly as possible. It's going to serve the town well in yeah. the end. And Don Blake serves the town in other ways, uh, in many, many ways, but he's always been very supportive. And, uh, in fact, our phase one project came in $5,000 under their estimate, and they returned the $5,000 to us. They could have taken on his profit, but they did not. That's mm -hmm. the way Donnie works. Yeah. He'd already given us a pretty good cutoff anyway uh, on the price, but he added another $5,000. Right. That's the other thing I was going to say is many folks may not be familiar with the term DBI, but it is Donnie Blake who lives right here. So he's a local contractor. All right, is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. Next, going back to number one in new business, discuss the proposed change to the sidewalk policy. So there's a, <coughs> a sidewalk built here in town that uh, by all measures, looking at it, looks just fine, except that it has uh, a jog in it, and it's a sidewalk on Jersey Heights, in front of uh, one of the new the Minx uh, office building. Uh, it was formerly the house uh, that his office. The Red House. Yeah. yeah, I can't think of the name of it. I can't either. Home. Anyhow, as a reference mark. Um, so they put the sidewalk in. There is some stuff in the front closer to the road and obstruction, so they angled the sidewalk back toward the building, made a straight line, and then angled back to where the sidewalk then continues all the way across, or all the way down Jersey Way to the guardrails. The only problem with the way that it's built, and they built it as per our policy, but our sidewalk machine in the wintertime doesn't turn on right angles. It turns in a curved radius. So the language we're proposing to be added to the policy tonight. 
is where a sidewalk turns, changes direction, or intersections with another sidewalk, and at least a five foot radius inside curve shall be provided for sidewalk plow turning movement. So that's under letter D of section five. So that's, that's what the, the policy change is just uh, having future sidewalks built with that curvature built into it instead of a, a sharp angle. We can't do anything about that one, but that's just going forward. We, we can't at this point in time. We're working with Grant to possibly uh, fill in that, that corner. Yeah. So, uh, and then there's a couple of just minor changes you see in 5A. Uh, it talks about the thickness of the concrete, um, the four inch, at least four inches thick uh, for all driveways, but not road crossings. Yeah. So, uh, that just as a clarification. And then in line six, the words alternatively via are added to that sentence. So I watch them separated from adjacent roadways, the vertical grant curving with an eight inch reveal or alternatively via a grass strip that is at least two feet in width. Okay. Any questions with this or do I hear motion? Um, I'm gonna do an English teacher thing. Could you change it to uh, changes direction or intersects with another sidewalk? Oh, uh, we certainly can. Okay, I think that would be better. Yeah, without the chin on there. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. Good test. <laughs> yeah, I need my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do I hear a motion? Uh, I make a motion that we accept the, uh, the amendments to the Morristown sidewalk policy. I have a motion by Jess. Is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Well, we're talking about it. All these sidewalks that are being built all over the town, are we, once they're built, are we following every one of them? Only if they are connecting with our current sidewalk system. So we don't have a sidewalk in mind. Well, for instance, we have MSI. MSI. Right now, there is no connecting sidewalk. And you'll find the DRB put a stipulation into the permit for the model cannabis uh, on Stafford Avenue, in the mm -hmm. in-between section between the uh, truck route and Brooklyn Street. They have a responsibility to build a sidewalk. And I believe it's from, I don't know exactly where it starts and ends, but it's, in, it's directly across from their, uh, their building. So there will be gaps in that sidewalk that eventually will get filled. Uh, but there's no new construction plan that we, the DRB can put those requirements on, so there may be some of our well, tax dollars. There's one over by the Union Bank in the big part new one, yeah. That's the new one, that's, Howard's. that's, yep, yeah, that sidewalk continues all the way through over to the so industrial park. Yes. If they're a connecting sidewalk, we do take them on. Yeah. So we don't have to approve it, I mean, they can just build them. Well, they go through the, the, the DRB, I believe. I don't know about the one in Howard's parking lot. Okay. I'd have to ask Todd about that one specifically. But that one was put in there. The town really requested that be put in. Yeah. Uh, and working with them because that gaping opening, vehicles can enter that Northgate Plaza Drive from any angle. And it was really dangerous. So uh, they allowed for room for semis to be able to pull in off from Brooklyn Street and make the corner without obstruction. Um, but it, it clearly designates a, the, the lanes on the, be the east end, west end of that parking lot. Yeah. All right, is there any, any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. Number two, discuss for approval Homeland Security Program application for EMS and police radio grants. Jason. We applied um, the PD and the EMS teamed up and applied for a radio grant for new mobile radios, portable radios at the PD, and then uh, portable radios at the rescue squad. And total amount is 164000 So uh, the radios, like I said last time, are almost like computers now, so they get outdated after a while. Yeah. So we have started budgeting, like this police cruiser, we have this $8,000 radio budgeted in there, but this grant will hopefully allow us to update the whole fleet and save us 164000 bucks combined. 
That's awesome. We won't know if we get it till the January time frame. But. Yeah. Do you remember the breakout? Because it was quite a number of portable radios. Yeah, do you have uh, what do you want? the number of portable radios? Okay, portable we'll have it off 10. There's, well, there's 10 for EMS and five for police officers to wear on them. There's nine for police cars and there's one fuel van consulate for the police department. Sounds great. Sounds good. Do we need a motion for that? Motion to approve it. This is the one I did the uh, the poll by email last week. Yeah. Uh, to which all of you responded, and uh, so this is just the formality of approving that now. We had a, a deadline of last Friday to get it in, so I needed a, a poll from you to approve it, and then formally bring it in front of the public tonight. So there's uh, the transparency. That's great with the cost of those radios. It would be great to get them all covered. It sure would. Now, is that going to cover the one that's coming in the new car? They, they're different. Okay. It won't cover it because we had to buy that one. We'll have to buy that before we're awarded the money by the grant. <coughs> but the new, if you get a new car later, it might go to it. Okay. Yeah, it definitely will. Great. Do I hear a motion regarding this? I'll make a motion to it. He's got it. Got a, you guys are going for it. That's why they have us at I'll motion to Brian this time. You want to second it, though? I'll second it. Is there any further discussion on it? Is there any matching um, matching funds obligation? Okay. Don't no, they pay 100%? Yeah. Okay, great, cool. That's great. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. We received a message from Todd, who's listening in, and yes. he says that the sidewalk in Northgate Plaza was a DRB mandate. Okay. Thank you. Thank Todd for that. I think you just did. <laughs> yes. Well, you could have walked away. You could have walked away from the TV. He's at home. All right. Number three. Discuss for uh, for approval the Mount Department of Public Safety 2023 CDIP Drug Task Force Grant. Uh, Jason, you're on the spot tonight. Uh, so we have been awarded a hundred thousand dollar grant, which we're going to use to help fund our detective lieutenant's position. That's great. Uh, it's through the public safety. Mm -hmm. Wow. Can you keep getting those grants? <laughs> keep trying. I was going to say thank Tina because she's the one that has to deal with all these grants right. once we get them. Right. Which are very time consuming. Thank so. Tina. And then that's for one year? That covers one year? Yeah, it starts from now till June with a okay. plan on re upping it okay. for as long as both us and the state, as long as everybody's happy. And that's a uh, grant available through the state? Yep, through Department of Public Safety. Okay, and they keep it, the money's available hopefully year after year? We're hoping, yeah. We're okay. hoping this is going to be a long term. We've done it before in the past, okay, yeah. uh, and we have in the last few years because of staffing, but now that staffing's back up, we get back into it. Great. Thanks, Jason. Do I hear a motion for this? He's waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion we approve the Vermont Department of Public Safety. Uh, accept the grant from the Vermont Depart Department of Public Safety for $100,000. If you would authorize me to sign on your behalf. And to authorize Eric to sign on our behalf. All right, I have a motion by Don. Is there a second? Second. Second by Brian. We heard the discussion on this motion. I take it this is why those officers from Stowe are moving this way, these grants? <laughs> That's what it takes. <laughs> yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Number four, discuss the Morristown Jersey Way three acre stormwater filtration project grant. That's a mouthful. It is. So uh, we've talked about this project on numerous occasions. We have. And this money was ARPA money that was designated to fund or help fund this project. Uh, project is over in Jersey Way. It's a two acre parcel owned by Howard Menashe. It's in the midst of the larger development that is uh, fully occupied with buildings at this point. Um, it's a requirement under the three acre rule from ANR, uh, three acres or more of impervious surface. So that includes the structure's footprints, uh, pavement, the sidewalks. The town is one third owner of the impervious surface in there because of the sidewalks and pavement that we own. Uh, and then the rooftops, driveways, all the other things are, are the homeowners. They have a two thirds ownership over there for the project. The project itself, uh, throughout the paperwork, just requires 
uh, or is asking the town if they're going to take over primary responsibility for this project. But it's based on a, a design, a filtration design that's, in, that's meant to go in the ground, way deep in the ground. And just recently, Tyler Mumley, your engineer, who's sitting here in the crowd tonight, uh, has dug test holes over there and hit surface water relatively shallow. So I'm going to let Tyler speak more to the project itself and what we think maybe the, the, the drawbacks from that. And I can also update you. I've been in contact with the state today to discuss so that trying to make sure the money doesn't go away. Welcome, Tyler. Hi. Um, yeah, so to back up a little bit, too, I mean, the, 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 there was originally design done, it was called the 30% design years ago. And I, I believe they did that under some, some grant money from back then at the state level. Um, and so at that time, they weren't approved for doing test pits uh, out there, any real site exploration. So they had a preliminary design, uh, but they hoped that it would work uh, in this situation. So the result of the test pits, that the, the seasonal high water table that we found out there is just too shallow. In fact, we actually found seeps at about six feet deep, and the system is designed to go 12 to 15 feet deep. Uh, in order to catch and tie into the existing catch basin culvert system that's out there. And um, so it's problematic. Uh, there is a potential way around it to include some under drains to essentially create a false seasonal high water table, but um, uh, I'm not sure if that would fly uh, under today's rules and um, if the state would, would go for that. Again, it was a 30% design, so don't mean to throw anybody under the bus, but that's what we're dealing with now to see if it can work. And the other other problem with this system is that it was designed to uh, essentially interact uh, with some private properties. And so we're trying to work within the confines of the, well, not public area, the <laughs> Howard's area, yeah. which we could work within uh, and avoid installing new pipe or installing new infrastructure on private property. Well, the 30% design did include uh, pipage uh, and, and culverts and such that would go across private property. So that's also a hindrance. Um, one, the, the system itself, even with the under drain system, to, to lower the seasonal high water table would need to outlet in daylight and go across private property. So that's a, that's a problem in dealing with the private property. And two, there's an collection, existing collection system that runs across some of the front yards that we want to tie into in order to collect more of the impervious area runoff. So uh, one, we can't get across the private property and two, we'd be limited by how much impervious area we can get. The, the three acre rule essentially says you have to treat uh, up to 50% of the water quality treatment volume, one of the criteria for the three acre rules, or treat 100% of the water quality volume against 50% of the impervious area. And so this 30% design had figured out you know, a watershed that captured 50% of the property out there, 50% uh, of the impervious area of property, and treated it. But that included you know, interacting with private property uh, as far as installation of infrastructure. So that's the, the conundrum we're sitting with. So initially I brought this to you in hopes that the <coughs> test pits were gonna go well, and everything was gonna be uh, rainbows and uh, sunshine. Uh, unfortunately it's not, so I, I've already spoken to the state today. Uh, Megan who, uh, uh, works in the office. Jim Pease is here as well, you can see. Jim has uh, recently retired from that office, but he still is, knows a lot about it. it. As a resident here in Morrisville, and he has a lot of background knowledge in it. We we'll continue to keep, keep Jim the fold on this one. Um, they are uh, continuing talks. I got an email late this afternoon from Megan, and she just said that she didn't have a chance to schedule for very hectic. Didn't have a chance to get some feedback from the staff there, uh, but they're working on it. We're going to we're continue the conversation. So, not seeking to have money taken away from the project, but trying to seek uh, perhaps an alternative solution to it uh, out there. But it's going to take some more some more planning. So, yes, yeah, happy to see you come in, Jim. Can you give us your opinion on it, uh, or you don't want to? Yeah, I don't know. It's not as a well, I'll, I will just, just point out, and, and, and I think Eric's probably spoken with Megan in some emails, but the money that this was allocated, was allocated in Jersey Heights, does not have a match requirement. And um, uh, any, 
I, it may that may change depending on how long this takes going to wait. Uh, so I guess the question to me would be: Was the money that was set aside for this project adequate to do an alternative design? If that's what's required, um, and I, you know we've just been beating this horse for since while. January or February. Um, and so I don't think the state's going to wait indefinitely, but it could be they're going to wait a little bit longer. Um, it's just that if you if you um, had to, there will be additional funding available, but it will come with a match requirement. Um, so <coughs> you know you can either go with what you had and and make it work, and uh, or you can apply again, but then you'll have to do that. <laughs> Does that sound about right, Tyler? Well. Um, we know the it's, it's a tough situation because the town uh, did the right thing a few years ago. It took over, you know, managing right. that permit. Mm -hmm. And so the homeowners are clueless. Really. Yeah, they have no idea about it, right? Well, they're also opposed to paying anything. Yeah. Um, which is crazy. Normally, in situations like this, there's an HOA involved in the development, right. pre-existing. In this case, there is no HOA. The residents over there have had <coughs> discussion about this and are not <coughs> inclined to form an HOA. Without a formed non-profit HOA in place, then the money's going to have to run through the town. They're a two-third owner, we're one-third. So it's a matter of not only figuring out the plan design and, and implementing it, it's also a matter of trying to figure out how the uh, costs, because it's not just putting in the ground, which this money is supposed to cover that cost, but there are annual fees to be paid on a stormwater permit and servicing of the filtration system, which includes our vac system to go in and, and take out the, the sediment that's left in, behind. So there are costs, annual costs associated with it. They aren't necessarily all that high if you're spreading it out over that many people, but. Again, right now we don't got uh, any kind of a, a firm a head nod from homeowners in that area that they're willing to jump in on this as an organized group. So there's a, there are some issues. We're not the only ones in the state. There are other developments that are existing that this new law has come into and, and we're back on and identified. They need to get permits. They're running the same same kind of situation, but I uh, you oh, sorry. Nice <laughs> Go ahead. I have two questions. Um, one, um, Jim, what do you mean by, um, I'm curious to know what you mean by making it work? Like, like are you saying um, there's a possibility of just, you know, if we get the money and then somehow we make it work? It sounds like, well, I, I don't mean, know. You could, if yeah. the cost estimate for an alternate design was less than the cost. I mean, this, this design is pretty elaborate. Okay, yeah. Um, you could get it. I don't know, you could possibly do a wet pond or an extended detention wet pond, which could be cheaper, mm -hmm. but without having that cost estimate, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll say that I, I, don't, I don't think today this design even does work as it is because of the, pop, the problem of interfering with the private property. Mm -hmm. right? um, and so if you take that aspect away from any design, then it becomes difficult. And even if we, <clears throat> were to deal with a more shallow seasonal high water table that we found, there are still things we could do. I mean, we could still potentially do a, you know, a shallow uh, dry infiltration basin, but it doesn't capture enough runoff. Another possibility is just what's called simple disconnection of <coughs> seeing other places that are already meeting standards. But when you add those all together, it's hard to get to 50% of all the impervious area in the property without uh, doing some sort of new type of infrastructure on private property, albeit culverts, swales, ditches, small ponds, anything like that. So I, I, I think the path forward right now is really, is really troubled based on the fact that you can't work with the private properties. Um, and if we could, then we probably could come up with a <coughs> solution to get to that required treatment level for the rule uh, and potentially within, within the budget, because again, the budget is very high based on this initial design, it's you know, large chambers deep in the ground and a lot of infrastructure. 
Um, so if you can find something less impactful that's cheaper, then, then great. But again, I don't think, I, I can't say we can't get there without private property. I think it's very difficult and it would take a lot more work to figure it out. So we can, we can move forward and do that, but it's, you know, it's, it's a little scary to start walking down the road without knowing where we're going. Yeah. How much, how much money are we talking for like this, this project yeah, as proposed so far? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the end game was 400 plus. <coughs> it was, it was all in. This, this cost estimate you have in front of you with the pink highlight at the bottom, uh, I highlighted that number because the next number down was a uh, escalation factor due to COVID impacts, 25%. Uh, leaving that off, it takes it from the 439.9 down to 351.9. Still, it's a large amount of money for, you know, for this project. And the grant itself is for 316,000. So um, at this design level, the grant money isn't enough to cover the total project. So there is some, some money to put in. But, and if you're know. talking about private property, are you saying that we would have to purchase uh, the, an easement over these private properties in order to install this, this uh, system? Yeah, I mean, the way that we work with other towns that work with HOAs is there is some sort of easement or agreement in place. And, it's really just about the ability to access it, to inspect it yearly, and the ability to access it, to maintain it. So it wouldn't have a direct effect on homeowners, but you have to, you know, if there's a, if there's a culvert going across somebody's property, then you have to be able to get in there and, and look at it and review it. And are you saying that there's not um, compliance or willingness to work with the town to allow access to private property, or we just haven't gone there yet? On an individual homeowner basis, where this, so when Menash is built to develop, they put mm -hmm. this uh, storm drain system in along Foss Street. Mm -hmm. It goes across private property, but there was never an easement granted for the mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so we can't even go on the property to clean out the current existing manholes. We don't have an easement to do so. So in order to tie that into this plan that's devised, we would need to purchase the easements across those properties, mm -hmm. or if they were kind enough to grant them, to grant the easements, we would cover the legal costs. Mm -hmm. Um, but we would have to get the easements because by tying it in now we, we are owning the responsibility of cleaning out those manholes. Mm -hmm. So you, has the town reached out to them? The, the well, the, the individual homeowners where this, where this line runs is only a fraction of the right. homeowners that are responsible for covering the cost of this filtration. Right. So uh, I don't even know how many houses there are in that development. Um, but whether they're but all of their homes are collectively looked at for the three acre impervious surface. Mm -hmm. So whether it's stormwater coming past their house or off the roof of their home that's being filtered or not, doesn't matter. It's one large development. All the homes in it are, um, all their impervious surfaces applied to the three acres. So they're technically all two thirds owners of the impervious surface issue over there that needs to be taken care of as well. Well, I mean, so are you saying, so I guess there's like the two questions, like, um, do you have, do we have to go talk to, are you saying all the homeowners of Jersey, of Jersey Heights to see if they're willing to kick down for the easements, or are you saying that we can just speak with the few individual property owners who we'd be asking, requesting the easements of? You're saying we want to spread the cost out to all the property owners, instead of just putting the, the, um, the <clears throat> responsibility on, on the actual, the property owners, because it's everyone's dirty water. So that, yes, the answer yeah. is yes and yes. So okay. best case scenario, this grant covers the entire cost of the construction. Right. Yeah. The construction is now on the ground, and we've gotten the easements from the property owners and, and all as well, but mm -hmm. there are annual payments yeah. that have to be made along with maintenance fees. And those would be borne in a two-thirds, one-third share between the town and the owners of the properties over there. With an HOA, it makes it very clean. Uh, they pay a minimal amount to their HOA, and once a year they they write a check to the town for the total. We, we would write the total amount to the state for the permit. They would reimburse the town for the two-thirds responsibility they have. They have had discussions over there. Uh, Rich Jacobs, and I bring his name out only because he's done a lot of the legwork and a lot of the talking over there in that community that he lives in, but I'm not gonna say that he's their representative because there's been no formal uh, designation of an HOA or any group over there. He just simply lives there, has taken an interest in this to try and garner support for an HOA, and 
is there is no support for an HOA over there. Um, but the fact of the matter is, it can't be ignored. Is the state is the uh, bearer of the bad news on this one, and we have to comply. So how we get to the end of it is not only a design problem, but it is also a problem of several factors: the easements, of obtaining those, along with um, the, the long-term payments. You know, it's not the taxpayers of the entire town should not be held accountable for this development. It's, it's a fairness standard, basically. So if the town said, well, we'll just take care of it, that means everybody in town is now paying mm -hmm. for this over there, and it's, it's really on the homeowners in that development. Two thirds. So, so basically, the town's clapping yeah. <laughs> Well, one third of us is, yeah. So what do we have to do? I mean. There's a lot of discussion left to have, yes. Uh -huh. At this point, we need to continue dialogue with the state to talk about the possible uh, alternatives that Tyler was discussing today. Right. Uh, to see if we can get to a point where we find a way around this design and still meet the state's requirements. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to take much more deliberation, but I, I bring this to you because there are timelines on this and they were pushing for signatures, but I, I reached out today to let them know that I can't, because of the design, not or the, the soil is not supporting <coughs> the design, I can't encourage you to sign this grant agreement, which is, is there's a responsibility in here that uh, lies mostly on the town. So uh, that I'm bringing it to you to keep you up to date on this. I was bringing it to you for signature initially, but this has now changed directions a little bit. We're gonna to continue to talk to the state. There's <coughs> short timelines, I would say, and nobody set any hard line in the, in the, on the ground that it has to be done by this point. But it's better to get it done sooner than later. The state's not gonna wait around. They're not gonna leave $318,000 designated if this thing's going to drag on and on and on, if there's a legal problem, whatever the case may be. So we don't want this to drag on further than it has. So are we talking weeks, months? I, I, I couldn't even give you an estimate. I guess All I can tell you is that I, I would continue to talk to the state with Tyler, Tyler uh, advising with Jim, because Jim has seen it from the state side of things. He's also a taxpayer here in Morrisville. So uh, we have the benefit there. I'm not trying to don't eat your time for you, Jim, but uh, his knowledge is not to be ignored, so that's why I uh, keep him in the loop. I'm asking a question that, that I don't expect an answer to. In thinking about, I know that there are other developments that haven't even started, and and wondering, is it on the DRB's docket that they have to make sure that this um, doesn't happen this again? This doesn't happen again. I mean, this is something unusual <coughs> because it wasn't in the in the cards a long time ago, but now it is. So stormwater permits are issued to the developers, not to the town. So the storm, which, and we can use one more recently, uh, Pope Meadows. Okay, so the Pope Meadows development was completed. Uh, they, re they requested uh, the town take over the roads and sidewalks in that town. We did the whole process there, accepted the roads. With that comes the acceptance of a portion of that permit. We have por par a partial responsible for the permit. Uh, Nick Donza is the head of the overarching H uh, HOA, and then there's an HOA of the residents there. So Nick took front seat on the permit when we did the, uh, the adjustment because we'd taken over the roads, and he put himself, he put his overarching HOA as responsible for annual fees. So there was no cost to the taxpayers. The servicing of, or the maintenance of the, I think it's the Seven Pond design over there, the clean out of that would be a shared expense. The soils over there are very sandy and light. It's not like we're going to have to clean that out for a long, long time. It just has to be washed over, and Nick does that. So <coughs> newer developments, their stormwater permits come from the state. They have to comply with those. The only time it would become a town issue is if they request the town take over the roads. And if we took those roads over, then we also take over the subterranean infrastructure as well as the surface stuff. So, and then we then become a part, uh, part owner in that permit. So, as I've said to you before, this Jersey Heights, Jersey Way development in this system here is a precursor to a change in your roads policy that I'm working on now. Because, again, the, these, these fees, it doesn't mean you won't take over roads in the future that makes sense for the town to do so, um, but it means that those fees will not be incurred 
on the tax base of the entire town. They'll need to be an HOA in place. They'll need to cover those costs annually themselves. Is there any way to say? Well, I've been waiting to call on David. He's exactly. been waiting about 15 minutes. <laughs> Is there any no way comment to, no. Is there any way to require that um, that in some way the um, the Jersey Heights residents are um, responsible? I mean, it seems. It, I mean. I, I preface this with saying these are all my neighbors, so I hope I'm not like really making anyone mad. At <coughs> but is there any way like that the town can require like you you all have to either have an organization or um, be responsible for your your share of um, of this responsibility? Like it doesn't seem it doesn't seem fair that they can they can not. Like not weigh in, they can not weigh in and not share the responsibility, but put two thirds on the town. It seems like there has to be, there must be something in place where we can say like, okay, you don't want to do an HOA, you still like, you have to get together and decide how, how we're going to work on this. So I haven't chased the ground any legal options that the town right. able to take to impose a, an addition okay. to their tax bill annually or something along that line. I don't know if that can be done or not. Right. It sounds like a great, easy idea, easy solution. However, I don't know that that's a legal way of doing it. So I, I've got to run those things to ground. Right. It's one of the many things to do with this project that are problematic. But um, I mean, ultimately, the town could just, and I don't want this to be the, the uh, this is last resort. The town could simply say, we've done our best. Yeah. We aren't going forward with this project. The money will disappear, and then the state will come in, and they will they will hand out their own version of punishment. I don't know what that would be. I don't want to sound onerous, but I, I don't know what it would be. We don't know what the state would end up doing, but we would definitely lose three hundred eighteen thousand dollars in funding. Yeah, that's, that's a that's a big hit. Especially, yeah. this, especially in this budget year, I mean, really, that's such a huge increase. Like if we had this on top, I don't. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. But the, did you get to talk to the person over there that's been kind of leading? And oh, I, I've talked to him many yeah. times. I know Rich Jacobs personally. Know he, he, this, he knows. They're going to pay it off. He knows. They know. Okay. Believe me. They, I, Rich, I've had many conversations with Rich. They, he's fully aware. I think giving him a third is a mm -hmm. lesson for them. Mm -hmm. Why should anybody in the rest of the town taxpayers even pay a third of that? Because we own the, high, the highway and the sidewalks. Yeah. And that was calculated in the important service. But we service. did that as a favor. <coughs> like, you know, we take them over and we plow them and sand them. Mm -hmm. So I just, I think to let them know that we're, I think they're doing them a favor already. <coughs> work with us. Yeah. Yeah. David first. Yeah. Hi, I'm um, do we use a microphone? Yes, please. Introduce yourself to. David Ring. I don't know anything about the system, although it sounds like it's quite complicated and over and under the nine both at the same time. But um, what's the harm being done? So far, I've heard a lot of discussion, but I haven't heard of any harm. Where, where's the harm? That's a good question. It's, been, I think it's a, it's a state mandate. It's a state mm -hmm. wastewater stormwater thing we've been dealing with for almost a year now. No, but as, far, as far as what, though? I mean, what, what's yeah, not well, working? I think Jim. It's the phosphorus in, oh. into Lake Champlain. I mean, the legislature wasn't necessarily the agency. It was the legislature that passed it. So the existing system isn't treating it adequately or something? Right. It no. doesn't. Right. Right. A lot of these systems just convey. They don't really treat it. And you mentioned something about the HOA being uh, a contributor as far as the houses, are the roofs tied into the system? The roof actually drain into it, or there's driveways, or what is it that the HOA has to be involved with? What part there's of no the HOA? That's the problem. Well, I mean, if it was, you know, each individual, yeah. the grounds besides the road, it's just runoff. It's runoff for that area. Just runoff, so that it's contributing to the the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as you're well, nothing closer than we were. We we started this right. almost a year ago. Over talking that, about over lo that. longer than that. This this was on one of I uh, came here. Dan Lindley uh, had I already, remember had already been to the board right. uh, for approval to take the lead on this to try and run the right. ground. Thanks. Okay, I think we're going on eight hours talking about this at different meetings, yeah. and no closer. 
I would assume the property owners understand that they, they could be punished by the state. That word has gone out. I, I, we can't identify what the punishment is. We don't yeah. know what that looks like. It's not defined. But the state can take action up to including a lien on their property. So I, I, but I don't know what the state would do. I honestly don't. I don't want to get to that point. I'd much rather come to some sort of an agreement. Uh, and, and again, it's going to just take a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion. Well, thanks for bringing it to our attention yet again. You're most welcome. <clears throat> I appreciate it. I saw that on there. I said, yep, that's a half hour talk right yeah. there. I appreciate not getting us any closer. Jim's staying involved. He's retired. He yeah, thanks, thank you. Well, I appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, gentlemen. All right. Next, remove, uh, remove private road name Toulouse Lane. So it's come to our attention, uh, Toulouse Lane came before you for road name of approval, but uh, it was pointed out by the owner of the property that what he purchased was two side-by-side -side lots. Our road naming policy says if you're subdividing a property and there are three lots on that property, you need to name the road onto it. Uh, it slipped past our people here. Uh, they sent it through and processed it and it was approved at the state level, brought it to you for approval, was approved here. So a road name entrance for the property was given. <laughs> but now we're looking at it and there is a squabble between he and the joining or abutting property owner. And uh, this has become an issue is whether or not this is truly a subdivision. And uh, where I'm not the expert on that, what I see is they purchased two side-by-side -side lots that DRB is most likely going to require them to drop the center lot line and make it one lot. But regardless of that, our road naming policy requires there to be a three lot subdivision in order for, as a minimum, in order for the uh, road naming policy to come into effect. So uh, we missed it at our level. It was overstepped. So uh, uh, they're requesting that the road name be rescinded. And because it was done here, we're asking the board to make a motion to rescind the road name. So I make a motion to rescind it. A motion by Brian and a second by Judy. Any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is passed. All right, moving on to old business. Discuss the parcel discontinuance of Westside Street. So you've had your site visit, you've had your public uh, hearing. Uh, this is the, the West High Street, um, just a reduction at the end. Um, the homeowners there have indicated they have no objection to an easement for water and light for their manhole or an easement for us for road maintenance. Uh, 20 feet was the length discussed, but we can iron that out for the, the building of the easement itself, but the no objections on their part. Okay, that's good. So a motion from the board to uh, shorten the, the length of West High Street to line up with the property line of the feral property would be sufficient, I believe. Do I hear a motion regarding To end that? at the feral property, you said? At the feral property, yeah. uh, property line. That was at Monument Center oh. Drive. I'll make a motion to discontinue West High Street at the feral property line. Property line. <clears throat> second. Motion by Don and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? Is there, um, Mary had some concerns about this, and mm -hmm. we don't know what that does with Mary's concerns. If I may. Go ahead. Uh, hi. Good evening, everybody. My name is Ryan Farrell. I am the property owner. Um, I unfortunately was not able to make the original um, public the meeting for public comment, um, but I did review and I did have um, uh, we did have a nice discussion with Mary. Um, her concern mainly was that if she had guests that. Um, you know, if we were given more control over where that property ended, that we might put up a gate or something like that, making it more difficult for her guests to uh, turn around and exit the property. We have no intention of changing anything about the way that the, um, the road terminates right now. Um, as it stands, it, it already is a dead end. People already need to pull all the way up and then back into our driveway, which would be crossing the property line anyway. So we have no intention of changing anything, and we've discussed it with Mary, and she seems that she's happy with it. Thank you. Thanks for coming in tonight. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Approve the warrants. I hear a motion to approve the warrant. Make a motion to approve. Do you have a price on early number? I've got him. 
They're coming. Okay. I have a motion by Brian. Who said a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Warrants are passed. Next T report, Eric. I uh, really am only going to be discussing the, the, the first storm of the season. And our highway department was out uh, dealing with that on Friday and Friday night and through the weekend. Uh, it was, uh, as we know, about a foot or more wet, heavy snow, which always makes it more problematic. Uh, they will be out tonight, uh, starting about 2 a.m., starting to clean up these piles that are gigantic uh, from one storm. So uh, if folks live in the village, they'll be hearing the, the equipment, but uh, it's all part of our storm cleanup process. But they, they did a good job. We always have hiccups no matter what. Uh, you know, we've, we've had a couple of village residents call with concerns. We've addressed those concerns and uh, we just continue forward. So, Great. That's all you got? That's all I have. That's good. Any questions for Eric? Thank you, Eric. Select board concerns. Don. Um, I, too, want to thank the, the town and for getting the roads clear and getting things done certainly in a timely manner. I, I want to say I did connect with Dave Lowe in regards to the clock tower, and we're kind of hoping that we can get up there in the spring and, um, and uh, see how that all works. And I also want to just uh, say we have a, a minor celebrity, not a minor, we have a major celebrity in town today that was, our, that was recognized on TV today. So I just want to send my, uh, my thanks out to Kubo. Um, one of our canines on the police force who was on, I know, WCAX this morning, and he is officially retired, I am told. So, Jason, you can pass on the good words. <laughs> That's all I got. All right. Cool. Judy. I just want to thank, again, uh, Highway Department for the work they did this past uh, first big storm of the season. And water and light, because um, I don't know about anybody else, but we didn't lose electricity, and I was very happy. <laughs> very long? Four hours. Yeah. Um, and I was uh, like this for the majority of it. So. <laughs> Me too. No, no. <laughs> but I think well, one, of our, one of our clocks was flashing, so we must have lost it, but I didn't notice it. Great. Yeah. All right, thanks, Judy. Jess. Um, uh, I don't have any, like, I, I also want to thank the town. Um, I had no trouble getting around, um, driving around, and I also did the tower. It did flicker on and off, like super, super early in the morning, but um, no normal person is up at that time. So, um, <laughs> yeah, or so, yeah, well, you and me, Bob. You're probably up a little earlier than me. Um, and I want to appreciate you all for. Um, accommodating me on Zoom. It's been um, good for me to be able to attend some of the meetings on Zoom. Um, I know I mentioned it before, but um, the budget schedule is super tough for me. Um, um, and having a family and um, having a full-time job. And again, I would, um, I, I just wonder if there's another way of, um, of setting the schedule or um, pulling some of the meetings, um, like. Can, um, putting some of the budget meetings together. Um, I know we don't want to make any one meeting like super long, but um, for me and childcare and all of that, it would be actually easier just to do like fewer, longer meetings. Um, and I know as, um, you know, that's, that's uh, probably a deterrent to uh, younger people with families of like the number of meetings around the budget se season. So um, just something, um, just again, something to think about. Um, I I feel like we should have had a little more say in the scheduling um, because we're the ones who have to sit um, in the meetings. So um, just moving forward, I'd like to address that and find some other solution. Um, but other than that, everything's um, great. You know, um, yeah, that's all I got. We used to do that, but the meetings used to go to 10:30 at night. When we I combined mean, budget it's, things, and that, that's yeah. too much to ask, four yeah. hours, yeah. four and a half hours. Yeah. I remember those days, and that's when we broke it up. 
You know, I just always felt myself that's part of what you sign on for. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be on the select board, you sign on. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks don't realize that when they take that position. That right. There's several weeks in a row in budget time I, that you've got to dedicate. Well, know. originally, the original um, budget, the original schedule wasn't that this year. And it really changed. But it has been for many years. It's been like that for yeah, I, long, I, long time. I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessarily the most efficient use of time. I understand what you're saying. It is something I signed on for, but it's also um, I don't I don't know that it has to I don't know that it has to be that way. Right. Like there might be ways of streamlining it. Um, One of the big things too is make sure you have all the materials in front of you. If yeah. you can't be here, you have all the handouts yes. and everything yes. ahead of time. Like come I'm, here ahead of time. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus, but there were you know there were no other handouts in my box, and I'm still I don't have. A folder, so I I view them on PDF, and I'm pretty um, savvy that way. Mm -hmm. but I you know I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jess. Yeah. Brian. So again, a big thanks to the highway department for everything they did during that bad storm. Also, the power company because it was an over and a cocker note. I think they were out six hours. Wow. Well, it was at work, so I don't know, but that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. Also. We did that. I'm not sure I'm like Oh, that's that's the that's the see the uh, the red line in the uh, inside of that corner. Yeah. That was uh, Todd drew that up as uh, an example for the change to the silent policy. That shows that five foot arc that they were talking about in the policy. The policy change. So the sidewalks from their port now would have a a uh, concrete uh, curve in the five foot. That was exhibit A for that. It, it was. <laughs> well, I didn't know. It just was there. I know. I, I sort of inferred it. Right. Okay. It was a guess. That, that was me. I'm a visual learner, so yeah. I like to see things. <laughs> Is that it, Brian? Yep. Thank you. And I've, I don't have any. I was going to, Don kind of stole my thunder. I, was, I saw the news story about the canine. I think that's very awesome. And can you, can you? Say some of his stats, some of the stuff that he's gotten. Yeah, we're actually doing a press release. We'll have a better, I, mean, I, I don't know the stats off the top of my head, but. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, they, it's pretty impressive. But we are doing a press release here, probably not this paper, but the following news. So. Great. Thank you. All right, that's all I have. Um, <clears throat> next, community concerns. Do we have community concerns tonight? None. It's worth noting that dog supposedly took hundreds of pounds of drugs off the off the streets. Fentanyl, yeah. Yeah, no, he's taking a lot. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other business? I move to find that premature general public knowledge of pending or probable civil civil litigation or prosecution to which the public body is or may be party will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing its negotiation strategy. I have a motion by Don. Is there a second on that? Second. Second by Judy. Yeah, yes. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's passed. I further move that we enter executive session to discuss the pending and probable litigation or pros prosecution under the provisions of Title I Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statutes to include Eric Dodge, Town Administrator, and Attorney Jim Barlow. All right. Is there a second on that? Second. Second by Judy. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. We are now in executive session.